A massive headline dropped earlier this week that Barcelona had paid a lead referee in La Liga. Now, unlike Manchester City, this is not an investigation yet, at least not an investigation directly of Barcelona yet. This is actually a, a tax investigation into the company that this money was being paid to. Now, the company is called DASNIL, and this company is being investigated for not reporting its tax stuff correctly. And if you're wondering what all of this means, well, Spain obviously is very zealous when it comes to prosecuting tax stuff, but it actually has to do with the main figure in this entire story, not properly reporting what he was being paid to do. Which if you're thinking, gee, that sounds sketchy, it does. If you think that's sketchy too, then by all means, you know, come into the Twitch stream, tell me yourself. So I feel like I'm not going crazy here, which I might if I get sued by Barcelona. I, how could that? happen. Break out the legal team. This is the main figure, Jose Maria Enriquez Neguera. Negaida. Negreida. Nailed it. Now, he was a referee in La Liga until the early 90s, but more importantly, he was the vice president of the Spanish Referees Committee up until 2018. That's pretty important. And the company, D-A-S-N-I-L, received payments amounting to nearly $1.4 million from just 2016 to 2018, but Enriquez Negreida never reported what the service he was providing to Barcelona was. He didn't actually say what he was being paid to do in his tax reporting. In fact, he, he didn't say he was doing anything. He provided no documentation showing he was providing a service to Barcelona, which is either a really unfortunate paperwork mistake or the sign that something very sketchy is going on. If you're noticing that I'm being pretty careful with the way I'm wording things, one, I always am, I try to be, two, uh, well, Barcelona's been incredibly threatening about ways that you could interpret this. This all comes from Barcelona president Joan Laporta, who's the type of person that's probably very excited that I'm saying his name. Now, he has come out and said, not only is it very normal for lots of big clubs to hire refereeing consultants, but this has come out at a very inconvenient time or a targeted time. Saying it's no coincidence that information of this type has come out when Barcelona is doing well. It's no coincidence. He said it forcefully. And then Laporta and Google Translate combined to provide absolutely brilliant vocabulary in the threatening quotes. On the part of Barcelona, any captious, tendentious interpretation that insinuates things that are not will receive a proportional and appropriate response from the club. We reserve all the actions necessary to defend the honorability and interests of Barcelona, sorry, Spotify Barcelona. He is very intent on crushing the dissemination of misinformation to distract Barcelona. But at the same time, I would casually counter with the fact that given the rabid media that surrounds all massive global superpower clubs, I would be surprised if they happened to be paying the vice president of the referees committee over a million dollars in a three year span and we hadn't seen that news story because basically every reputable news source wrote an article about it the day it happened because it's big news. See, ESPN is also reporting here that you should subscribe to the channel. That's, what's, what's that doing there? That's crazy. But back to what actually went on. The payments to DASNIL were over $500,000 per year. And according to previous Barcelona president, Joseph Maria Bartomeu, they actually existed as early as 2003, which is an insane thing to say. It's like, well, you're already dealing with this problem, but what if we just made it bigger? Like, I, I don't understand why, why you would say that. I, I really don't at all. But it's perhaps because Barcelona is leaning into the full defense that Negreira was hired as a refereeing consultant, which does sound like a very normal thing for a large club to have. And John Laporta addresses this because the payments ended in 2018 because Enriquez Negreira, I, I knew I was going to get it wrong eventually. Well, he eventually retired from that referee's committee. So it now, uh, th these types of external services fall to a professional assigned to the area of football, which is a section of Barcelona's operations. So they're now, they're, they're internal, they're in-house at Barcelona, which is what you would expect they would be at these major clubs. You bring in a former referee to provide you with these kinds of services. I mean, I'm somebody that's never worked at a major club, but that makes sense and also avoids any potential massive catastrophic and devastating conflict of interest that it could at least look like is happening. Now, Enriquez Negreira, he came out and said that this had never 
affected any of his decision making working in the referees committee, which honestly, if he'd come out and said anything else, this would be an even bigger story. Now, Kadena Sar, who actually ended up breaking this story based off of the investigation, also obtained documents that said that Barcelona had been obtaining this kind of refereeing information all the way back to 2003. Now, if we take that $500,000 figure and project it backward, we're talking about a lot of money that was paid into this company to acquire refereeing services. I'll let you do the math because I'm bad at math, but $500,000 a year is a lot of money. But Barcelona is digging its heels in that everybody does this. Xavi backed his club as well as you would expect from the manager. We're seeing the same sort of thing from Pep at Manchester City, even though these are entirely different types of scandals, if you could call this that. But Barcelona is really digging in with its defense that every major club does this. Xavi also said a very similar thing, said, look, we're always studying the referees, trying to get the upper hand. You would expect the manager to stick with the club. That's not a surprise. But all of that argument was undercut by one group we haven't talked about yet, and that is CTA. The CTA is the Spanish Referee Committee. That's the, 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 the languages. And they were very forceful in separating themselves from Enriquez Negreira, Negreira, <clears throat> still on a roll, because they were clear that they wouldn't have allowed this if they knew it was going on. The CTA wants to make it clear that Mr. Enriquez Negreira has not been part of any federative structure since the change in governance carried out after the 2018 elections. The referees committee regrets any behavior that may be likely to undermine the ethics of the profession. No active referee or member of the bodies of the CTA can carry out any work that may be susceptible to a conflict of interest. And then the CTA is at the disposal of the courts to offer its complete collaboration. Now this not only is a very aggressive way to say that the guy's not involved anymore, it's also seems to be, it seems to be a statement that like, well, no active member could, could do this, right? You know, this is not something they stopped short of calling out Enriquez Negreira and saying what he did was wrong, but the way that they chose to comment on the situation is a very aggressive attempt to distance themselves from any inkling that they would be involved in such a thing and from Enriquez Negreira himself, which makes it feel like perhaps this is a little less normal. And if it is normal, it's absolutely something that the Spanish referee committee wants to keep under the rug. And every referee committee would want to keep under the rug. This would be a problem. So the final two cents on this is it smells fishy. And with CTA coming in like this, it makes it feel like every big club is not happening to pay the vice president of the referees committee for advice on how referees are behaving and such. At least that's what they're disclosing publicly, right? Their defense is that that's what's happening. And the CTA seems to be suggesting it's not something that they would be comfortable with. Hi, this is Future Zealand with an update on the potential sanctions for Barcelona. So Javier Tebas, who's the leader of La Liga, came out the day before this video was set to come out and said they weren't gonna be able to punish Barcelona. But then when you dig into why, this all becomes very alarming because it's a statute of limitations law in Spain that makes it possible to punish clubs within three years of an offense. But since this happened more than three years ago, there is no potential punishment. But Javier Tebas did say it is evident that in 2018, and in previous years, the compliance regulations which monitor conflicts of interest both for Barcelona and the referees committee failed. That is crazy. The leader of La Liga is saying exactly the opposite of what Barcelona is saying, that this is not normal, this is definitely weird and a huge conflict of interest that they didn't catch and now can't prosecute. That doesn't mean that sanctions aren't possible against Barcelona, they just can't come from La Liga because of the statute of limitations. Tebas went on to say the criminal jurisdiction is another issue. Now the prosecutor's office is investigating the events that occurred and whether there may be possible crimes of corruption between individuals in terms of match fixing. Hello, that's the leader of La Liga saying the quiet part out loud that they could still be actually prosecuted for match fixing if the evidence does lead them there. But at the very least, at the very least, Barcelona crossed an ethical line and the referee committee in Spain crossed an ethical line that was not caught by La Liga in time. It was apparently a line that was being crossed repeatedly since 2003. Tebas said that basically they're gonna wait for the prosecutorial decision and then from there, we will make decisions. So 
La Liga might still be involved, they just can't do the investigating themselves on the charges that they would be able to investigate. We're in the early stages of this, and as we just talked about with the Manchester City situation, this is going to take time, and that is all the information that we have. If you don't know the Manchester City situation I'm talking about, well, here is a lovely video to catch you up with the 115 charges the Premier League is levied against Manchester City for breaching all of its various financial rules. Not fun for City or anybody who lost. It's just not fun.